There is an absurd amount of information you need to keep track of in a game of Smash. Am I in percentage range for a kill throw? Is my opponent low enough for this combo to work? And when they're off stage, are they recovering high or low? Add on 80 different character matchups with different movesets, and we have a game that brings players to their knees. But this is also why we naturally gravitate towards characters with simple yet powerful game plans that specialize in a couple of aspects. Cloud spacing, Steve damage output, and Rob zoning. On the other hand, we've seen characters with crazy complex strategies and combos requiring much more dexterity and mental energy to stay competitive. Sure, they are much less common in Bracket, but what does it say about their viability? Is a complex character inherently disadvantaged in the current meta? And what immediate trade-offs come with such a taxing strategy? Well, to tackle this big topic, we have the giant from Canada, Big D. The Ice Climbers have been some of the most controversial characters in Smash history, starting with their wobbling in Melee, to infinite chain grabs in Brawl, to being completely omitted in Smash 4 because of the 3DS's limitations. Fast forward to Ultimate, and we have arguably the most balanced and honest version of the character. Well, at least until Big D started playing them, who uses virtually every trick in the book to push the Climbers to their limit. Right off the bat, we have to talk about not just his tech skill, but his consistency. For being one of the more mechanically demanding characters in the meta, I struggled to find a set where D was significantly misinputting. He is really adept at converting combos off of his D-Syncs, the down special covers Popo's end lag here, which leads to this F-Smash combo, and the launch offstage gives him the time to set up for this landing D-Sync and ultimately put Jackal in a no-win situation. I'm a huge fan of his spacing with Squall. Notice how he backs away to avoid an out of shield punish. He squalls again, anticipating Moxie's approach. And this Blizzard locks him in shield, which opens up a grab and a kill opportunity. Here, he holds shield, not worried about being grabbed by Isabelle. And this gives Nana time to come back to stage, which he times beautifully with a dash back fake out to win advantage. And from here, it's a pivot desync to overwhelm Jaden with ice shots and a kill confirm. The climber's damage output gets put on full display here. Gluto gets lit up for 48 off of three hits. And look how well D is tracking his movements, staying right below him to force a corner landing. But the true beauty comes with this pivot cancel up tilt with Popo. And again, we see the blizzard shield lock to secure a grab and the lead. Big D also boasts some of the best ground control among active players. His combination of Squall and Blizzard cuts off any grounded approach, but this is actually a bait for Naito to jump. D anti-airs with an up tilt correctly and sends him back off stage to reset the situation. This is more of his dominant stage control. Here he initiates pressure with Blizzard, which leads to Riddle's NA air dodge, but Big D reacts well with a side B, and this eye shot was phenomenal awareness for the jab lock opportunity. Not only that, he's got trump confirms, footstool combos, all the while, his opponents are panicking desperately trying anything they can to counter this obscure character pick. But even when they know the matchup, the climbers have so many mix-ups that it's hard to keep track. This means D can catch players with the same trick again, and again, and again, and again. Now, some of these are cherry-picked, and don't tell the entire story, but the vast majority are born out of Big D's most underappreciated skill. Oh my god! god she oh, so read. I could spend an entire day going over Dawson's combo game, but to me, the most impressive aspect about his craft is his game sense. Despite piloting one of the most complex characters, Big D has a knack of perfectly waiting until the moment presents itself for him to capitalize. After getting off the ledge, Leon burns his double jump early, which gives D the green light to contest in the air to force a defensive option. He empty hops back to not overcommit, and he positions himself well for an up tilt anti-air. 
only this time he stays grounded, correctly predicting a more aggressive landing, resulting in a sensational sequence. Another aspect that's exceptional is his Sopo, who generates more value than he has any right to. And the trick to me is not necessarily his mechanics, rather it's a mix in his overall game plan. While most Sopo players opt for a more defensive style due to the Gimp recovery and damage, Big D is running his opponents down. And notice how calm he is with these empty hops in a Game 5 last hit situation. After not dying to Naito's up B, Big D aggressively lands with a down air before proceeding to up air the entire world. The snare up tilt was a great read, and he finishes the sequence with a dash attack to continue the juggle. Here he maintains center stage well, Kurama concedes the grab threat, and it leads to more pressure to freeze Kurama in shield. Coming full circle, D is a living, breathing showcase of why complex characters should never be forgotten. While yes, most will perform better with simpler playstyles, sticking to a character with unexplored limits will almost always prove to be worth it in the end. Players have been very low on the climber's viability, myself included, but now in year 5, we are finally seeing what these former low tiers are capable of. Of course, with the burden of a high execution game plan comes with its share of issues. And for Big D, the main issue is not that he runs out of steam, rather it's the overcomplication of certain situations. This is a natural product of having to play at a high motor all the time, and despite how efficient he is, it does lead to temporary lapses in judgment. This is especially apparent at the ledge, where he intentionally separates the climbers a bit too much for my taste. This desync solo squall was pretty greedy, especially with how often Shutan's been jumping, and it leads to an eventual lost stock. Here's an example in neutral. I'm not entirely sure what Blizzard out of the shield was trying to catch, but Syrup only has to land a single forward air to draw first blood. Here he does a good job at forcing a shield, and a grab into up smash would have been guaranteed as we've seen earlier, but he up tilts instead and this opens the door for a comeback. Furthermore, Big D has historically struggled against disjoints, and while I attribute this issue more to the character, the lack of a secondary means he has to brute force his way through some pretty tough situations. The most extreme case from my account was against Spargo, who was able to react to most squall attempts. This mid-range spacing keeps D from initiating any desyncs in fear of an aerial, while this empty hop cross slash was really effective for him. And because he's threatening a hit at all times, D wasn't able to set anything up that was meaningful. Nana gets launched off stage, which now pigeonholes D into fighting for stage control, and Cloud versus a single climber is absolutely a tough look. I, for one, find Big D's dilemma extremely interesting, because it paints one of the most polarizing matchup checks for top 50 players. Recent performances have produced victories over Akola, Riddles, and Tweak, but also falling to the likes of Grape and Cosmos. It is still early, however, and only time will tell if the climbers are fully figured out, or if Dawson can continue to pull more tricks. Big D truly brings the perfect blend of tech skill and game sense to master the climbers. While other characters have multiple players competing for the best of their respective main, we have yet to see anyone truly challenge Dawson's throne. As far as rankings go, I admittedly have a pretty wide range for Big D. On his best days, I can see him competing for a top 10 spot, while his bad performances will bottom him out at 25. I don't think he goes below the top 30, but it's also difficult to judge because most players he comes across are figuring stuff out on the fly. So, as it stands right now, I would rank Big D as a top 20 player in the world, and the undisputed best Ice Climbers player. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and learned something useful. If you did, let me know by leaving a like and subscribing for more Smash Ultimate content. 
Huge shout out to Beyond the Summit, VG Bootcamp, and many other Smash Ultimate gameplay channels for providing the VODs. If you're interested in top level Smash play, go check them out, their channels are linked in the description. If there's a character or player you would like me to do an analysis on, let me know in a comment below. That's all I have for now, and I will see you all later.